You have a great computer, and then you get a device that requires USB-C, but you only have USB-A ports available on it. What do you do? You get an adapter, USB-C to USB-A, plug the device into that thing, and then plug it into the PC, and now it can communicate with the device seamlessly, no problem. Not unlike this little adapter are MCPs, or Model Context Protocols. They allow the large language model to communicate and get access to data beyond its training cutoff date, allowing you to do more with the AI. Now that you have an understanding of what MCPs are, let's learn more about them. Actually, what I meant to say there is let's get into learning how to use MCP servers because there's plenty of videos out there telling you about what they are and how to build them even, but not a whole lot on how to get started using them. So let's take a look at how we can get started using them now and get set up. Really quick, just to point out the terms that we're gonna be saying and using throughout here. We have MCP hosts, MCP clients, MCP servers. This is coming straight from the model context protocol.io documentation. And what we're gonna be focusing on, you're gonna hear me saying a lot is clients and servers. Clients are things like, I'm not sure why they include hosts as part of this. They seem to go hand in hand, essentially, like Claude desktop or IDEs like cursor, VS code, windsurf. Those types of things are gonna be the clients that interact with the MCP servers when you have your everything set up. What we're gonna be focusing on is how to get started using an MCP server with a particular client. And the client we're gonna be focusing on is Claude Desktop. To get Claude Desktop, you can go to claude.ai and download it for your operating system, whether it's Windows or Mac OS. But if you are watching and you're using Linux as your main operating system, you can use other clients outside of Claude Desktop. We're just gonna be focusing on it for this video. Once you have the Claude Desktop app installed and you're signed into your Anthropic or Claude account, you now have an MCP client that you can use. We need to move on to MCP servers now. So the further drive home the situation here, what MCPs help out with is what we're talking about here. The knowledge cutoff date for Claude 3.7 Sonnet in this example is October, 2024. So it only has access to data and information that it was trained on up until that point. So how do we get things that are more recent? Like let's say weather. If I come over here and I give it a new chat and I say, hey, what is the weather in Chicago today? It's gonna sit there and think about it for a second and then says, I don't have access to real-time weather data. Now, one option that we have that's available via Claude, but not necessarily all AIs, is to turn on web search, which will do its best to search the web for websites that have information on the current weather in the location that I'm asking for. So if I retry this now that it has access to search the web, we can see it goes through that process. And while this is good for this purposes, imagine not all AIs have this capability to search the web for one, and two, this may not be the best source. Maybe Wonderground is not the most accurate one or the Weather Channel. It's, it's gathering all this information from different sources and it could be different, you know, well, the weather is unpredictable anyway, right? But like, you get the idea. So to get a more reliable response about weather in various locations and any questions we have about weather, we can use an MCP that's focused on that. So I found this one that's called Weather MCP Server up on GitHub made by this individual here this GitHub user, and it goes through the setup instructions, what it features it has available to us, and then the setup and install instructions. So it's using another tool called Smithery, which I'll go over shortly, but I run this command in my terminal. It will set up the configuration for Claude to enable this MCP within my Claude desktop client, and then I can start using it. So I'm gonna go do that now, and then we'll try out asking for the weather in Chicago again. All right, I have it all set up. I'm gonna say, what is the weather in Chicago? And now you'll notice one thing different here really quick before I send that is this little tool that popped up. It says one MCP tool available. I click on that and it's talking about this weather MCP tool that I set up, server weather MCP server that we saw earlier. So I know that it's already picking up even just from the prompt before I send it in to start using that tool. So I'm gonna send it and then this is what happens. It thinks about it a little bit and then it prompts me to make sure that I want to use and allow this MCP server for this chat or just once I'm gonna go for this chat. It's gonna now use that tool behind the scenes, that MCP server to gather data using, in this case, the open weather API service to query the weather in Chicago for us. And there we have it. We could see the current weather is 18.15 degrees Celsius or 65 degrees Fahrenheit with overcast clouds. 
and the humidity is this and all that fun stuff, right? So this to me is a more accurate, I think, at least, well, weather as accurate as weather can be, and two, a more reliable way to get consistent information about weather in this case. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, oh, big whoop, it's weather. You also have the web search that could have kind of done that and it gave similar results. What's the big deal with that? Well, you can see this being used for other more up-to-date information that you want to find out about, like news or stocks or sports scores, things like that. You can have an MCP server to help serve up that information to you on a regular basis that's outside the training cutoff date for the model you're using. But I have one other example I'm going to show you that I think is even more interesting, especially for us developers, that this kind of thing, MCP servers, can really help out with in an interesting way. In a past video series on this channel, we built out a Discord Wordle bot, which you can check that in the link in the description below if you'd like, and we capture player results into a SQLite database. And as of right now, I only have queries that surface data in a certain way just to generate a leaderboard and folks is past results from when they played, that type of thing. What I think would be interesting here is if I could analyze that data with AI to find unique ways to surface that information that's relevant to players of the game. So this is where an MCP server comes into play. Let me show you. The Model Context Protocol website has an official SQLite MCP server that I can use for this purpose. So I went to the repo here on GitHub. It gives me information about how to set this one up as well. It's all based on running this essentially locally, pointing to a local instance of my database, which I have. Let me show you. I created a local instance of the database here, and that's the one I'm going to be pointing the MCP server to for analyzing. The way I do that is going into the Claude desktop configuration, just like I did for the weather MCP server, but I added the SQLite server. I told it to use the UVX command, and then I passed in these arguments. It's got to use the MCP server SQLite package, and then I tell it the path to the database, in this case, where I have the repository and that local DB located on my file system here. Once that's there, I can load up and open up Claude desktop and then start talking to it about my database. All right, I have Claude desktop running. And just to verify that that MCP server was installed correctly, I'll bring up the Claude settings, go to the developer tab, and then I can see there's a new SQLite option here in addition to the weather one. And we can see it's all set up the same way and it is indeed running. So that now tells me that I can say, hey, can you take a look at my database and tell me what it's about? Let's see if the AI can figure out what this database is doing. So right away, we get that prompt again, this ask permission if we can use that MCP server, the SQLite one. I'm going to say allow for this chat. And then it's going to prompt me to do a little bit more, like describe the table. So we're going to say allow for this chat as well. It's doing some more work and operations. So now it's asking for a, another permission to run a read query. We're going to allow that for this chat as well. It's writing out some queries for this. It's getting a response. And now it's wanting to check how many players are in the database. Okay, cool how many games have been played, some statistics from the scores table. So all this is running these read queries against the database. And now it's finished analyzing and it says, based on the database structure and sample data, here's what I can tell you. It appears to be a Wordle game tracking database. So that's pretty cool to learn that. Likely for a Discord community, which is correct. Uh, there's players. This is a database keeps track of players, Wordle games, and scores. The system appears to be tracking competitive Wordle play among Discord users where players can opt in to participate. That's really cool, picked up on that too. That is another feature I had added that's outside the video that we recorded on here. The database records not just wins, but also ties, suggesting multiple players can submit their Wordle results for the same puzzle, and it compares their performances. Would you like me to analyze any specific aspects of this data? Yes, I do. So oh, actually, this is really interesting. There's a total of 3,418 score re records with 786 wins, 830 ties. That's pretty cool to see. So I don't have any queries in my code that do that for me. It went and just figured that out on its own and then gave me that information. So something else I want to see is like who has the most wins. And the way we calculate wins in the Discord community is whoever solved the puzzle in the least amount of attempts. And if somebody got the same attempts as you, that counts as a tie and there is no clear winner in that one. So in this case, we can see uh, we have about five folks here. Uh, interesting note though, interesting to note that while I have the most total wins, this other player actually has the highest win rate among the top players, winning about 36.9% of their games compared to me, which is only 22.1%. So their win rate is better. That's another cool and interesting bit of information that I didn't know previously.
All right, one last thing to ask it. Who has completed Wordles with one attempt the most? Because that is really hard to do in this game. If, any, if you're familiar with Wordle, you know that it's hard to get it on the first guess. All right, we can see we have a few players. One player with three one attempt solves, another one with two, and then a bunch of one attempt solves. I personally have not gotten any with that, but props to these folks that have been able to do that. So really cool. This is super interesting to me and will give me ideas for queries that I can construct and build into the app now to make it more fun and engaging for players of this tool that are using this tool and playing this game. Now, before I get to the conclusion of my final thoughts, along with resources that I want to share with you so you can get started, be sure to like the video down below and share with somebody who could put it to use. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. It greatly helps us out. In conclusion, here are my thoughts on getting started using MCP servers as a beginner. One, a lot of times finding these MCP servers can be difficult and you don't know who's the author behind them and what their intent is and motivation behind creating them. They might have malicious code and the security aspect of this is a big question mark for me, what I'm using on my machine when I'm running these things, right? And then two, they can be sometimes difficult to get set up and working within any client because even if you follow the documentation step-by-step step perfectly, it still might not work properly. And then three, this one's particular to Claude Desktop. I didn't show this in the setup here, but anytime you install and get an MCP server set up again, you have to restart the Claude Desktop client. And that's kind of a pain to have to do that over and over again, especially if you're troubleshooting, figuring out what's going on and what's wrong with an MCP server that's not working properly for you. So you have to actually fully close out the Claude Desktop and restart it after you made some configuration changes. It'd be really nice if it had a mechanism to do that while the app was still open. Maybe that'll come in the future. All right, the first and main resource you should be checking out is modelcontextprotocol.io. Link will be in the description below for all of these resources. This is a huge help in getting familiar with things, maybe aspects of MCPs that you're not quite understanding and you need clarification on. This website will help you out greatly in that regard. Then when it comes to finding MCP servers for things that you're looking to do, there's two resources I wanna share with you. One that I found really helpful was glamma.ai, G-L-A-M-A.ai, you can see. And this one allows you to search and it has a wide variety of servers and categorizations for the MCP servers that are there to help you find ones that are relevant to your needs. In addition to this one, there's also Smithery, which you'll find being used by a lot of the MCP server developers as a means to simplify the setup process for you. But to be honest with you all, even the ones that use this, I found to be sometimes difficult and error prone and not quite work as smoothly as you would expect. All right, that does it for this video. If you got value out of it. Be sure to like it down below and share it with somebody who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy, safe coding, everyone.